wake up. My head. What happened and where the hell am I? What the hell is going on here? Channel 4 News are always versed.
those beings. Here's the tomorrow when you finally put the machine to the test with that umbrella. It's a mix of excitement and nerves, isn't it? Years of work leading up to this moment. Imagine the breakthroughs if it works. Tomorrow will be the day. Everything has to go smoothly. Our teamwork and determination might change the course of history. Cheers, Cheers guys. guys. Of her and based on my beauty view, they should be countless by now. They are morons. Since we landed on the moon, all research projects in there must be about how we send another man to there. 
Yes, but we know it will be ages until we can have people living there, let alone the threat planet. If we could make the experiments happen, humanity could preach lush words in merry years. I might have an idea on how we could continue. Next week, I can confirm if it would work. You sound more mystical. I will book this hotel room so we can keep eating there.
Ladies and gentlemen, the distinguished author, Mr. Aldous Huxley. Brave New World is a fantastic parable about the dehumanization of human beings. In the negative utopia described in my story, man has been subordinated to his own inventions. Science, technology, social organization, these things have ceased to serve man. They have become his masters. A quarter of a century has passed since the book was published. In that time, our world has taken so many steps in the wrong direction that if I were writing today, I would date my story not 600 years in the future, but at the most 200. The price of liberty and even of common humanity is eternal vigilance. CBS Radio, a division of the Columbia Broadcasting System and its 217 affiliated stations, present the premier broadcast of the CBS Radio Workshop, radio's distinguished series dedicated to man's imagination, the theater of the mind. Tonight, part one of two half-hour programs devoted to one of the world's most shocking and famous novels, Aldous Huxley's terrifying forecast of the future... Brave New World. We are proud to have Mr. Huxley as narrator for these broadcasts. Original music is composed and conducted by Bernard Herman. Looks like I stay here for a while. This is Aldous Huxley, and these are the sounds of the brave new world, of test tube and decanter, of hissing injectors and gurgling blood substitute. The year is AF 632, 632 years after fall. We are inside the London Hatchery and Conditioning Centre, and this is the fertilising room, an enormous laboratory where the temperature is never allowed to fall below 98.6. And here comes the director of hatcheries and conditioning in person, bringing with him a group Tomorrow, of young students. Tomorrow you will be settling down to serious work. Today I just want to give you a general idea of things. Uh, these are the incubators, and here is the weak supply of ova, kept at blood heat. Uh, come along, boys. Now here we immerse the eggs into a warm bouillon containing free-swimming spermatozoa. Immersion continues until the eggs are all fertilized. Ah, and over here, here is where we bottle the alphas and betas. In short, gentlemen, the perfect process for manufacturing healthy babies. Are there any questions? Uh, sir, uh, will you explain the uh, Bakanovsky process? I'm glad you asked that. Uh, students, take this down. Bakanovsky's process. Where in olden times, one egg made one embryo which made one baby. Today, we've improved on all that. Now the egg will bud, will divide, from eight to ninety-six buds, and every bud will grow into a perfectly formed embryo, and every embryo into a mature baby, making ninety-six human beings grow where only one grew before. Progress. But uh, what advantage is it, sir? Uh, I mean... Uh... Oh, my good boy, can't you see? Where in olden times nature allowed us only to have twins or perhaps triplets or so, today we can create scores, yes, scores of identical individuals. We can manufacture men and women in uniform batches. Think of it. An entire factory staffed with the product of one single egg. 96 identical individuals working 96 identical machines. At last, society... General really Ford knows News where it are always first. Remember, it was our Ford who gave us the concept of the assembly line when he was on Earth many centuries ago. And now, boys... We will go up to the bottling room, where we shall see how we create each class of society. Alphas, betas, deltas, etc. Come with me. Where, well, Nina? Oh, director. Oh, charming, charming. Uh, what are you injecting into our embryos today, my dear? Typhoid antitoxins? Yes, sir. Are you uh, busy this afternoon? 
Oh, not after five, sir. Good. Suppose we get together then on the roof. That would be fine. I've admired you for some time then, Nina. I'm looking forward to a closer acquaintance. Thank you, sir. And now, boys, we're off to the bottling room. You are a lucky girl. The director of hatcheries and conditioning. Oh, hello, Fanny. Oh, you can trust the director to be the perfect gentleman. I saw him pat you. He wants me. You see? That shows what he stands for. The strictest conventionality. And it's about time you started belonging to someone else, my dear. But I like Henry Foster. We've only been with each other four months. Four months? Well, what would the district world controller say? You know how he disapproves anything intense or long-drawn. And it isn't as though there were anything painful or disagreeable about being with one or two other men besides Henry. After all, everyone belongs to everyone else. You're quite right, Fanny, as usual. Good girl. Fanny, do you know Bernard Marx? <gasps> Bernard Marx? Well, why not? Bernard's an Alpha Plus. Besides, he asked me to go to New Mexico, to the Savage Reservation with him. But his reputation. They say he doesn't like obstacle golf. Oh, they say, they say. And that he spends most of his time by himself alone. They say somebody made a mistake when he was still in the bottle. Thought he was a gamma and put alcohol into his blood substitute. That's why he's so stunted. Oh, what? None.
know there are risks, and you both are rightly concerned. But this is the discovery of the century. There is no way I let this get out of our hands. Not to the government, and not to anyone else. I'm going to the hotel tonight and cross it. You will see how it's right. They can't open it. Channel 4 News are always first.
Oh, my God. 